Welcome in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Grace Tribe.
of a gas explosion is usually fatal and destructive, and precautions must be taken during the use. Brother Solomon almost had an experience that could have been costly. I want to thank God for his deliverance. That was last month. I was you know, making stew. But before then, my wife came back, so she came back late. So after our dinner, I continue with the, with the stew. I noticed when I was adding the curry and other things, the gas was smelling. The smell was obvious. Ah, I, I asked myself, is curry not smelling like gas? He went out to check. He heard the sound of gas escaping. And as he tried to stop the noise, this happened. So when I checked the, the gas head, the regulator, I noticed the noise was coming from there. So I quickly off, off the gas immediately. And once I touched, when I touched the head, the regulator head, it didn't do boom, meaning there's a space. So I want to thank God for his safety at that moment. I was quick enough to, to react. I mean, when I mean react, to off the gas. Because I've seen the effect of gas on gas explosion on people, you know, the damage is, 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 is massive. So I want to thank God. And when I remember that my children were sleeping, and my wife also, she came back, she was tired, and she was sleeping too. So I didn't even tell her because she's not aware. But I want to thank God at that moment that God really came through for, for us. Cooking gas is highly inflammable. And even with the strong smell, the house did not go up in flames. Indeed, God is faithful and mindful of us. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Let us now sing the words to the song, Ancient Words, as a prayer to God as we go into the Word of God. Holy words, long preserved for our walk in this world. They resound with God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Words of life words of hope they give us strength help us go in this world wherever we roam ancient words will guide us home ancient words ever true changing Heavenly Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. It's our prayer today that your words, which are timeless, would make such tremendous impact in our lives in the name of Jesus. And for this, I say thank you and we're grateful. Let these words, Lord God, cause impact upon all that will be a part of this meeting now, online, and everyone that will be a part of the meeting hereafter in Jesus' name. Thank you, precious Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, welcome to this um, online service of the Grace Tribe. You know, here at the Grace Tribe, we have a mandate from God to help people become his expression. And we're excited about doing this, you see. Um, though some people might think that this is such a heckling task, we've come to see how easy it is because we've come to see that, you know, first of all, being his expression is um, actually being 
his example or his representative. And we've come to see that if you live your life with a drive to want to please God, you'll be his expression. That's all. And that's the reason why we teach the way we do. Is the reason why we preach the way we do our conduct our services like we have them. And, um, you know, if ever you have the opportunity to come to the Lagos area, you know, or you're in Lagos area, we're giving you a... Uh, um, uh, an open invitation to come visit with us. We'll do our best to make you feel right at home. All right. Now, this evening, we want to talk about something very interesting. I titled it The Evangelist from Hell. Oh, <laughs> what do I mean by that? Well, let's go into the scriptures and um, take a look because it's taken straight from the scriptures. And so here in St. Luke's Gospel, I'd like for us to read a passage in St. Luke's Gospel in chapter 16 and in reading from verse 19 into verse 31. The Lord Jesus was the one that talked about this and um, we know the story. It's a story, well, a lot of us should know the story. It's a story of the rich man and Lazarus. All right? And so let's go ahead and read now. Everybody, wherever you're at, I'd like you to join and read right now. Let's go. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and he fed sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes and being in torments and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which will pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that will come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose, from the dead. And now here, you know, Lord Jesus tells of this um, particular story. Now this is not just a parable, this is a real account because he said there was a certain rich man. Every time Lord Jesus will tell a parable and then the Bible will say and he, he, um, he, he spoke a parable unto them in this wise. But this he was speaking specifically of an individual. There was a rich man. This, this rich man was a real individual. And then also there was a real guy named Lazarus. Now, unfortunately, many people think that, you know, and, and such an erroneous thought, the thing that, you know, um, when an individual is rich, then the person is a candidate to go to hell. That's not necessarily the case. And it is also a, a, um, a, an error for one to think that every poor person, or because somebody's poor, then the person, you know, is going to heaven. Now, the Bible shows to us why an individual will go to hell. The rich man didn't go to hell, you know, because he was rich. He went to hell 
you know the bible shows to us so let's take a look at this in john the lord jesus talked about it you know first of all let's take a look at john chapter 1 reading verse 11 and tw uh, verses 12 and 13 and, and then well from verse yeah 12 and 13 says but as many as received him to them gave he the power to become the sons of god even to them that believe on his name he goes on verse 13 and says which were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor the will of man but of god and so um what's going to happen what's going to take an individual you know what's the requirement to get the person into heaven if i might use that term what's the requirement the requirement is very clear he says as many as received him you know one receives him and that individual that receives him becomes like it tells us here born of god take a look at this in um, chapter 3 let's jump on to chapter 3 in the 16th verse of chapter 3 he tells us for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but shall have eternal life you know so any person that believes in him any person no matter the person's lean no, no matter the person's bank account no matter where the person is that person you, you know becomes um one who is saved or the decree goes should not perish but he has eternal life now notice what the bible says to us in verse 17 and he says to us for god sent not his son into the world condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved he goes on and says to us he that believeth on him is not condemned but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of god so that individual who did not believe or does not believe the bible says he is condemned already and he goes on verse 19 and it says to us it says and this is the condemnation so look at it this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil you know and so the lord shows to us this is the condemnation it's not that god's coming to condemn people and everything but hey light came the lord has brought salvation but people chose not to go in the direction of god that is the condemnation and so it is not because somebody is rich or because somebody is poor but what did you do with you know the lord jesus did you choose him you know did you choose light and let light con um, um cause you to leave did you live your way according to light or did you choose darkness and operate in darkness that the lord jesus tells us is the condemnation all right now that's very important and it, it tells us it shows to us how that this rich man when he died you know he he was buried and lazarus when he died the bible says notice it in in in, in luke in, he, he says to us when lazarus died the bible says the angels came and then they received him up i love that for every person who is saved who's received the lord you know there is a marking on his life and this is the thing about it the lord wants us to know if you've received him understand that once you step out of your body angels come and they take you away i'm telling you it's, it's, it's exactly like jesus i mean like like paul stated in second corinthians in the fifth chapter and then in the eighth verse he, he said that you know for one to be absent from the body is to be present with the lord there is no intermediary space there is no intermediary face the moment the individual you step out of your body you become present with the lord my goodness that's amazing and that's exactly what happened with lazarus here you know angels came and then they guided him there was no way whatsoever that he could have gone on somewhere else the angels took him there so what happens with an individual who doesn't know jesus who's not received him the Bible makes us know that the rich man was buried and then in hell. So which means, you know, he went to hell. You know, now that doesn't mean that you have to be buried before you go to hell. No. Once you step out of your body, your, you know, your, 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 your body falls down and it dies. And that's what, we, what it is that we say here in time. We say people die. 
you know. And so once your spirit goes, the real essence of the individual, the real you, steps out of the body. You know, the body stays on down. Now, where does that real you go? We found out that for the one who is saved and who has received Jesus, he goes to the Lord. But the one who is not, notice something the Bible says here in Isaiah and gives us real insight, you know, into this in Isaiah. And it, it, it tells us in chapter 14 of Isaiah and in verse 9, it says, Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. You know, it says hell from beneath. And so when an individual passes, the Bible lets us know that, you know, the guy doesn't even have the choice to say, oh, I'm going to go to heaven or something. You know, it says hell from beneath comes up to receive the individual. Now, here is something we must all understand from this passage. I believe that God wants us to notice a number of things. And I want us to notice a number of things here. The very first thing I want us to notice is that this passage is showing to us that hell is a real place. Hell is not, you know, like people will say, hell is here on the earth. Hell, you know, heaven is here on the earth. That's not true. There is a real heaven and there is a real Hell. The Bible says, in hell, the rich man lifted up his eyes, you see. So it's a real place in hell, okay? And there are certain things about hell. The Bible says that there is great torment there. When you read in the scriptures, certain things about hell, it shows to us that the fires in that place, they don't burn out. That it's unquenchable. It doesn't quench, you know. The Bible also shows to us that there are... Uh, uh, um, that there are worms, you know, in hell. And that, you know, the worms don't die. I, I believe that these worms are like maggots or something, you know. And they just walk tormenting individuals and all of that, eating through people, yet not um, consuming to the end, as it were, you know. Not wasting away, but just tormenting and tormenting and tormenting, you know. And then something else we, we know there is that the thirst, that people can get hungry and people can get thirsty. And the thirst of the place is horrendous. It is so horrendous that the Bible tells us that this rich man, you know, his plea was for Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger and then on water and come, ah, just, can you imagine? Less than a drop of water is the desire. And, and so that he, his thirst will be quenched. Yet that is not being quenched. What a horrible place. You know. And that's where the guy found himself. Now this is where any person who doesn't know the Lord goes to. And a strange thing according to scriptures is that hell is not even the, permit me to use the term, baddest of the places. You know, and the Bible talks about hell and death being cast into the lake of fire. There is something even more terrible than hell. My goodness, my goodness. And in this state, you know, that rich man, the Bible tells us, while he was there in hell, you know, noticing that there was no way that he could go out, that there was such a massive gap or gulf between them on the other side, on the side of paradise, and this way, that there was no way to go out of it, the guy immediately turned into something else. His desire became so strong. He had such a strong evangelistic desire. What was his desire? His desire was not even, oh, Father Abraham, get me out of this place. No, that wasn't his desire. His desire was not, you know, please let me have some food to eat now and all of that. That wasn't his desire. His desire was not, you know, get me air conditioning. That was not his desire. His desire, knowing fully well that here is where I'm going to be and I'm suffering for the life that I've lived. His desire became, Father Abraham, I plead with you, send Lazarus. The man became instantly evangelistic. Instantly. You know, send Lazarus. Send him to my brothers. If it's possible, you know, please send him. 
Why is it that this guy, who very likely had no, um, no passion, no drive, no heart for God, how, why is it that the guy has now become so evangelistic? Why is he now so concerned about the lost? He said, send, them, send him to my brothers because I have five other brothers and so that he can talk to them and, and then warn him about this place so they don't, they don't have to come here. You, you know, very likely those guys must have been living their lives, you, you know, in pomp and in pageantry. You know, even if they didn't have so much money, the man had died, they must have collected parts of it and they must have, you know, and they must have felt that this is the life to live. The way you live life is just for here, you know, and, and people that have been hailing them for every new car they bought. You know, there are people that are like that and then they'll talk about how that they'll get new cars and then they can get you know the latest of fashion and all those things and 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 you know that's what pushes them that's what drives them you know how the places they eat the the clothes they wear the the, the fashion the, the fashion of their life the, the, the guys must have been thinking about you know um, the kind of parties whose party was better than the other person's party you know generally living the life of the rich and the mighty and the truth is this this is not only the concern for those who are rich it's also the concern for every person most people live their lives with the mind of just making it they leave they put their entire energy their entire drive into what they'll eat and how that they'll do well in life generally that's how people live but this rich man this rich man in hell suddenly he came to the realization of the things that matter what matters what matters the cars don't matter now i'm not saying that you know um one should not have a car and should not have the quest for for a good life but i'm telling you here you know you cannot live your life and should not live your life focused totally on the things that you you know on leaving and then forget the one you should live for there is a reason for life and live your life for the reason for life for the reason why he gave birth to you why the lord brought you here you know and the bible lets us know that this rich man you know he said send let somebody be sent i do believe very strongly that if one is sent from the dead to my brothers i believe very strongly that they'll turn around i know them we come from the same stock but you know many times we think we know exactly how the spirit should operate i want to tell the spirit exactly what to do i've been in that position before i've had situations where i felt like you know i can't really tell anything about lord jesus i wish i i wish um you know uh, um uh, some other person could come and tell about you know how how he was in the occult and all of those things and then you know so people can be convinced but you see abraham answered him something which is what we all need to have in our hearts too he said to him they have the scriptures they have the scriptures they have let me put it this way that they have moses and the prophets and let them hear moses and the prophets here is it how do they hear how do people hear moses and the prophets they don't hear moses and the prophets because moses and the prophets are speaking they hear moses and the prophets because people share it people talk about it the lord was in essence abraham was in essence saying they have the scriptures and people tell them the scriptures you know but the guy the, the guy was still so very convinced and he said to Abraham, he said to abraham no if one goes from the dead they will be convinced you see this guy was so highly evangelical you know that's why i call this the evangelist from hell you know and abraham said this unto him if they would not hear moses and the prophets they will not hear anyone they will not repent though someone comes from the dead you know why is that the case i believe the reason is because though somebody comes out from the dead you know um it may titillate people excite people but it is not necessarily the witness by the holy ghost 
the Holy Ghost is um, authorized by the Lord to be a witness a witness unto him the Lord Jesus said that in Luke sorry in John chapter 15 in the very last two verses and he said and the spirit of truth when he's come he will bear witness of me and he said but you also must bear witness of me very important in the Holy Ghost he's mandated for that purpose you know Lord Jesus said and when uh, um, you receive power after the Holy Ghost come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem in Judea and unto the uttermost parts of the earth you know I went through all of this because I want to get to this point where I'll show to you people in hell you know and if this is anything go by their general desire is to want to come tell other people listen save yourself from this place there is a place like this you know in, in essence what, what what this means is that the most sought after job the most sought after assignment for the people in hell is to want to preach to tell to say it on to every person and you know what the most unfortunately unfortunately none of them can do it they had their time in life most of them disdained it most of them didn't take it as anything and that's the reason why they, they landed in hell you know they refused the message the bible says to all that received him so they refused the message light came and then they didn't embrace light people that told them about light they might have thought about it as just an ordinary simple thing that doesn't matter maybe for weaklings you know and then they find themselves in hell now don't be an individual who gets there to experience before you now realize that this is the truth don't be that individual okay and the Bible tells us that he pleaded let one go so this is the most sought after responsibility you know but none of them can get it not one however while we're here in time the most um, important job maybe the number one thing that God wants for everybody to do is to be that evangelist to be telling it and then to be making sure that other people are telling it so we find the Lord Jesus say in Luke in the 10th chapter and in the second verse and he said the harvest truly is plenteous plentiful great harvest but the laborers are few and he said pray therefore the Lord of the harvest that he might send laborers into his harvest field so we find here God speaking unto us and then saying unto us that hey you know what while you're here you need to take this seriously more people need to be involved with this it's not enough that you are telling about the Lord and showing people his direction you need no what it is to make other people do the same thing believers must understand this two things we must be doing in life number one we must be urging people to turn to the Lord turn from darkness to light we must be showing people the way of life we must be showing people how not to go to hell to save themselves from that place we must be letting them know about Lazarus and then the rich man we must be letting them know that they should escape from this place of great torment by following the light by choosing the light by by going in the direction direction of the Lord we must be doing that but not just that we also must be very very involved working with God for other laborers for other laborers to be in the field the Lord Jesus said pray ye the Lord of the harvest that he might send forth laborers into his harvest field that means that get involved in the recruiting of laborers that means that let it be a, 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 a very important prayer point to you let it be one of the important things in your life let it be on your to-do list let it be in your purpose you know let it be one of the things that drives you in life what is that that should drive you 
making other people laborers live your life in such a way that people would want to be laborers may nobody want to pull back away from god or serving him because of you live your life make the work beautiful make jesus beautiful before people make jesus attractive by the way you serve him and by the way you live for him don't serve jesus with a frown with a sad look with an attitude of like you know you're being beaten no no the greatest maybe the highest privilege one can ever have in life is to live your life for him to speak about him to preach to tell about him and tell the things that he's done in your life oh boy may we may you know that this is a great privilege and may you live your life that way you know may we not get into eternity before we recognize the things that are important it's because it is only in time you can make the adjustments that will define eternity when you're in eternity you can only look back in regret may regret not be the stock of your life may you be that individual who leaves celebrating in eternity because of how that you lived in time because you heard the lord say to you well done thou good and faithful servant you know and um have said these things to us so that we can understand how important our work is it's such an important work that god has given to us you know may you may we never be ashamed of it paul said i'm, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of christ for it is the gospel for it is the power of god to save may you know that this gospel the word of god that has come to you that's living inside of you the telling of the things that the lord has done in your life may you know it is the power of god to save in the name of jesus let this drive you on i'd like to close with this story i heard of a young man and um, he was he had this roommate in school but he was a christian and um you know, but his, his, his roommate wasn't a Christian, so he would go to fellowship and all of that. And he went on, a, on you know, one of these excursions, preaching things, you know, in, for, for like a camp meeting. And while he was there, and he was sleeping on this particular day, he said, um, the Lord came to him, in, like in a vision, and took him and said, come with me. And he and the Lord, the, the, the went, and the Lord led him and through time and space and led him into hell and he said he found, him, he found himself and he knew that this was hell because he saw the um, fires the flames and everything and he saw how people were screaming he saw different people mentioned people you know that he saw there and then he said he was shocked as they went on and then he saw his friend and then, what are you doing here you know and the friend said you know, I, I, I came here I came here on Friday so I had an accident and I and I found myself here on Friday and he was shocked and he said after that he was you, you know um, taken and he went right back into his body and he wo woke up sweating wondering what's this what can this mean and he said that you, you know immediately they got back from the conference he went home you know and then his mother said where, where have you been i've been trying to reach you and he said no I, I went for this conference and all that and he said oh what a sad thing happened with your friend because the mother knew him as his roommate and and, and he, i don't know what, 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 what do you mean he said you haven't heard the head what he said your friend died on friday he had an accident a ghastly accident and he died on the spot you know and they're having the burial the burial was going to be the next day you know and my goodness then he realized that this was not just a dream it wasn't just some make-belief it was something that had really happened three four five days ago because this was on, on a monday you know and he, he saw his friend in hell and he thought about all the opportunities that he had but it was too late for his friend my dear may we not live a life and live with people and regret that we never could talk with them hell 
is a real place. Let us have that drive. That rich man did not think about the um, distance from hell to earth. He didn't think about how much it was going to cost. He didn't think about, you know, everything that was going to be a sacrifice. He just wanted somebody to go. When you have that heart for people, the cost doesn't matter. You don't think about the inconvenience. You don't think about the distance, you know, and you just go. I pray for you today in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, may this walk inside of you. May this heart also walk inside of you in the name of Jesus because this is how the Lord wants you to live. May you have that drive, that passion that wants to take people away from hell. May nobody in hell be better than you in the desire to want to turn people to heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So don't you worry about the future of tomorrow. Say this, hello, hello, hello tomorrow. I'm not afraid of you anymore. Say hello, hello, hello future. You belong to me. You work for my good. Say hello, hello, hello tomorrow. I'm not afraid of you anymore. Say hello, hello, hello future. You belong to me. You work for my good. When tomorrow comes, you'll be here. Future. 
you belong to me you work for my good when tomorrow comes you'll be here better stronger